The year is 15122, and the world is being ravaged by the most transmissible coronavirus variant yet, COVID-122. As a result, all countries have gone into total lockdown. For the health and safety of others, governments are requiring people to wear hazmat suits whenever they go outside and take them off only when they get to work. Now, let's extend this scenario to create an analogy for generic pointers. For one, putting on and taking off a hazmat suit is like casting a pointer to and from the generic void pointer type. We can think of each person as a specific pointer, where their pointer type is their occupation. We can cast a specific pointer to a generic pointer by attaching void star in front of its variable name, which changes its type into a void pointer. Thus, when a person puts on a hazmat suit, it's like casting from a specific pointer to a generic pointer. Once people in hazmat suits go out in public, it's impossible to distinguish them from each other. Everyone looks the same. This reflects the generosity of void star pointers, as once pointers are cast into void star, they are indistinguishable from other void star pointers. Similarly, taking off the hazmat suit when you get to work is like casting a generic pointer back to a specific pointer. When working with void stars, one useful contract we can use is the has tag function which returns true if a void star pointer has a specified underlying pointer type. This is a useful contract because it can help us ensure that we are casting to and from the correct pointer type. In regards to this analogy, using has tag is the same as confirming a person's occupation while they're still wearing the hazmat suit. With the significant amount of advanced technology and personal data available to everyone in the year 15122, has tag can be thought of as a biometric scanner which, when turned on, verifies someone's profession while they wear the hazmat suit. In this world, people can only work in office buildings that accept their specific occupation, so their colleagues can verify that they aren't imposters before asking them to take off their suit. For instance, before entering a police station, the building's biometric scanner checks that you are actually a cop. Once the person is verified, they are allowed to enter the building and take off their suit. Since it's nearly impossible to work with a hazmat suit on, they must take off their suit inside the office to function as specific pointers. After a person takes off their suit, only then are they able to do their job, which is analogous to dereferencing that specific pointer. This reflects why we use has tag to check that a void star argument has a certain underlying type, because we want to ensure that we have the correct type when dereferencing. Using this analogy, we're able to represent 122's most important rules for using generic pointers. For one, you can only cast a void star pointer back to its original type. Note that when you take off your suit, your occupation does not change. Likewise, wearing a suit doesn't change what occupation you have, it just makes it impossible for you to perform your job. Therefore, you can only cast each pointer between its void star and specific underlying type. Casting back to the wrong type is analogous to having the wrong worker for a specific occupation, such as having a software engineer trying to make a YouTube video or give relationship advice. Of course, this can cause a lot of problems. As previously mentioned, we can prevent this from happening by using has tag in preconditions for functions taking in generic pointers. Next, you are not allowed to dereference void star pointers. Recall that dereferencing occurs when working in the office. And since it's nearly impossible to work with a hazmat suit on, you shouldn't dereference void star pointers. Therefore, the only pointers that you are allowed to dereference are the ones that have specific types associated with them. So remember to cast your generic pointers to a specific type before dereferencing. Well, if we have to follow all these rules, then why use generic pointers in the first place? Let's go back to our analogy to see why generic pointers are useful. Working during a pandemic is quite stressful, so companies are allowed to rent out party halls for their employees. However, every venue requires those inside to wear hazmat suits. Therefore, the party hall acts as a data structure storing generic pointers. The party hall can be rented out by one company each time, so we don't have to have a new party hall for every occupation. This part of the metaphor represents the purpose of generic pointers, to allow the same data structure to utilize many different types. To illustrate a concrete example, let's say that the client's code wanted to use a queue of integers. We can implement a queue interface that takes in elements that are int pointers. However, if the client all of a sudden decides to make a queue of booleans, 
we would now have to re-implement the entire queue structure to work for Boolean pointers. If we had to re-implement the queue interface for every new type, this could easily get overwhelming. Instead, it would be nice if we could have one implementation that could work for any pointer type. This is where generic pointers come in handy. It prevents us from having to rewrite many different queue implementations for many different types. However, we must share one final rule. You should only use the same pointer types in the same generic data structure. For instance, we can use our generic queue interface for either int pointers or bool pointers, but we should not have the queue store both int pointers and bool pointers at the same time. Doing so would be quite dangerous, just like having people of different professions partying in the same party hall. Hopefully this video served as a helpful overview of what generic pointers are, how we use them, and why we use them. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and feel free to check out our other videos on this channel for more 122 content. Thanks for watching and happy coding!